Finally, after so long, I finally finished Lord of Chaos, book six of The Wheel of Time. I was trying to remember when I started reading it. I think it was over the summer. It's taking me like eight months to read. Reason being, it is one of the longest books I've ever read. It's something like 960 pages which is huge. Felt like it was this big. Here's my issue with it. It's, it was good. It was really good, but so long. And the reason it took me so long was because halfway through, I thought, this is getting boring. <laughs> like, nothing much is happening. And of course, that's not true. Loads of things were happening. For those of you who don't know, The Wheel of Time is an epic fantasy series of 15 books. The first, like, 11 were written by Robert Jordan, but the rest of them were finished by Brandon Sanderson after Robert Jordan passed away. They're generally well-liked, but the, the thing is, they're long books and there's 15 of them. Ah, uh, it's like twice the length of Harry Potter and they're all the length of Order of the Phoenix. Uh, it's mad. I've been reading them now for like two or three years, on and off, and I have to take breaks while I read them because they, they, they're so long. What I'll do is I'll finish one of them, get really excited, read the next one, kind of get bored halfway through, put it down, read a few other things, pick it up, finish that book, go wow that ended well, completely forget that I put it down for a while because it was boring, pick up the next one straight away, read half of it, go oh this is getting boring now, and the cycle continues. And I was really really tempted to start reading the seventh book straight away and I thought no, I'm gonna wait. So this video is kind of a review of the sixth book in the series, but also just generally talking about how I'm feeling about the series so far. For those of you who haven't read it, it's maybe an insight into where the story's going to go, because when I first started reading it, I had no idea how it was going to finish. I still don't know how it's going to finish, but I had no idea it would have gotten to this stage. There's just so many plot lines and different things happening and well-rounded characters who have their own motivations and agendas and who are fighting each other politically as well as like physically. Specifically, Lord of Chaos. God, it's a long book. It's the longest in the series. I'm, I'm happy I finished it and it ended really well. I stopped reading it about halfway through um, when, when it was just talking about a lame and Nynaeve in Saladar, mostly because I felt that the plot wasn't progressing. Thinking back, I think actually there were a couple of good chapters there, because not much is meant to happen. It's meant to feel like the Aes Sedai are, are not doing anything, and they're kind of just like prolonging the state that they're in, they're procrastinating, so actually that that frustration at nothing happening was kind of mirrored through the story, and I liked that, actually, in retrospect. I didn't like it at the time. Also, it was doing a really good job at building tension between Nynaeve, especially, and Elaine, and those two with Mokedion. Mokedion? I just now realise that there's loads of names and places in these books that I haven't ever said out loud, and I've got no idea if that's how they're meant to be pronounced. The one big one is Tear. The city of Tear, like tearing paper, but then other people have said Tear. But then Tear makes more sense when they call themselves Tearans. I don't know, when I said it was Tear, uh, I was just mocked for my Welsh accent. That's right, I have a Welsh accent. Couldn't you tell? I got turned off by this period of inactivity from the character's point of view. I kind of just wanted to get back to Rand's storyline. Thinking back, it wasn't that bad, and a lot of things did happen, but slowly. But even if you're meant to be showing off that a long period of time is happening in the book, like, there's other ways of doing that. Robert Jordan generally doesn't like it. Like Tolkien, if people are travelling somewhere, he'll say, for many days they travelled across the hills and vales of Rohan. If Robert Jordan is like, on the third day, Nine have said this. Elaine said that. Matt was being annoying again, this happened. On the fourth day, you kind of have to think, wow, this doesn't need to be in the book. Except it kind of does, and this is, this is my main problem. The things that bulk out the book, bulk out the book and they make it longer and harder to read and harder to get to the end. Like, they space out the action, they make me want to stop reading, but also they provide depth of character. They provide emotion and ambition and motivation for characters. They build tension. They reflect the reality of, like, military campaigns and travelling across large lands in that it does take time. It's not just like, bam, they're in this place, bam, they're in this place. It's not like fast travelling in an RPG. You have to actually walk there. It's like playing Skyrim and not being able to just go to the map and go, go here please. You have to play through. It gives it realism and it also builds the story in a more complex way than just by focusing on the action. So I hate it and I love it. And I don't know which one is more, but oh, it's mad. I, I think I'm doing well with reading it so far. It's taking time. I always knew it was going to take time and I think breaking 
within the book is fine as long as I come back to it. I've had a few occasions where I've paused reading for so long I've forgotten what happened. I'm now in that stage with the Forsaken. I have no idea which Forsaken are alive and dead. Again, the depth of these books. There's 13 bad guys, plus the main baddie. Generally speaking though, I am enjoying the series. As I mentioned earlier, there are plot points that I had no idea could happen. I, I kind of assumed when I started reading it would be a very typical hero's journey, but not only are all the characters given their own story arcs that build into the main story arc, there's also just random other things that happen and then flow in. Again, like real life, like he's, he's taken will building to another extreme. He's not just talking about one group of people. He's talking about the world. He's talking about different countries. And the depth to which he goes into detailing these nations, about like how Domani women are like really flirtatious and about how in Ebu Dar they have these uh, ritualistic knives, how in Kyrian they're all about like the political power play. It's, it's mad and amazing. And it feels like a real place. I uh, watched a video on YouTube recently about George R. R. Martin and the Song of Ice and Fire and how it reads more like a history than a fiction. And I think this is also true with Robert Jordan. Even though it's talking about magic, it's really well detailed. And the people feel real, the nations feel real, and everything is has, it's given a very realistic tone, despite the fact that we're talking about half-human, half-monster creatures and eyeless, white, pale figures and grey men who aren't seen until they kill you and a guy who's a reincarnation of a dude who died thousands of years ago and has been reincarnated many times, it all still feels real. That's the biggest talent of Robert Jordan that I can see, that he can create a fantasy that feels like it actually happened. For those of you who have read The Wheel of Time, or have read some of The Wheel of Time, here's where I stand at the moment. Moraine is dead, but I don't think she is actually dead, I think she's going to come back. Same for Lanfia, only because Lanfia's destiny seems tied in with Rand's to a much larger extent. Like, she has this whole history with Louis Theron, and, and you just know she's going to come back. And if she comes back, Moraine has to come back. That, that's the only, like, logic I can think of there. Rand now has Andor and Kyrian, and I was really worried at the end of the book that he was going to be taken off and you'd have like two or three books where everything would start to crumble, but he, he's, he's okay and his power is intact. He's on such a meteoric rise, there has to be hubris. There has to be something that goes wrong, he has to lose allies. That's gonna have to happen, I think, before he builds up his power again and, and then we'll fight like Time and Garden. I think also that Rand might get gentled because they were talking about it so much and then the fact that it's now been found to be healed, I, I think they have to then play into that. So I think he's going to lose his power someone's going to gentle him, and then he'll have to get it back. Either he'll be healed, or he'll have to do something where he will, again, magically get the power back somehow. I'm not sure how. Logically, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking would happen in this story, but at the same time, when the writing is so intricate and complex, anything could happen, and it would kind of work, so I've got no idea. On my Kindle, I've highlighted all of Min's predictions, and I'm really enjoying going back and checking up on them, because some of them, like Perrin, has now found his falcon in Fail, who I hate. Ah, oh, she's such a jealous bitch. I can't stand Fail. Oh my god, she annoys me there. How can you be that? Ew. Anyway, he's now found her, but I know there's going to be someone else who he likes because he apparently has a falcon and a hawk, and I think this hawk is going to be another woman he falls in love with. If you haven't read these books, a lot of what I just said is not going to make any sense to you, so I do apologise. Anyway, I just had to get my thoughts out about that book and, and just talk a little bit about where I am with it. No one I know is, is currently reading it, it would be nice if I knew people who were on like a similar level. There's just so much, and like I could talk about this for hours because there's that much material to talk about, but I've, I've had to condense it, and I talk really fast, and I do apologise for that. Also, I've said um a bunch of times, and I haven't redone any of this because it's more of a conversational piece, whereas normally I edit the fuck out of these videos. Um... <laughs> okay. But anyway, if you've read The Wheel of Time, or if you're reading The Wheel of Time, or you're thinking of The Wheel of Time, uh, please comment below, talk to me about like how you're finding these books, uh, whether you are similarly intimidated by the length of them, but if you're enjoying them nonetheless, please let me know, and thank you very much for watching.